Hello and welcome again to this lecture on uh, shaft design. Uh, we've learned a lot about uh, shafts themselves and how to design them for uh, stress and for deflection and for uh, meeting requirements such as uh, twist angle, deflection angle, slopes and so forth. Now we're going to move to one of the uh, objects that is very important in power transmission and that is uh, the object of gears. So in this case, uh, gears uh, can be attached on shafts, uh, and each gear comes with a hub. And uh, we learn how to use uh, various uh, fi uh, fixation mechanisms to attach the gear to the hub. Now we would like to uh, talk a little bit about gears and how to design shaft systems with various kinds of gears. Um, when we have a uh, power transmission system, the axes of transmission, we have an input axis and output axis usually. And uh, uh, the input axis and the output axis can be either parallel or they can be intersecting. And they can be at different levels if they are intersecting. So in uh, these configurations, either parallel or intersecting configuration, uh, we need to choose a, a particular type of gear. Uh, so as you can see here, the types of gears that we have are two ty uh, four types. Uh, two of them are for uh, parallel uh, axes uh, for input and output shafts. Uh, first one is called the spur gear, where the teeth are uh, parallel. The faces of the teeth are parallel to the um, to the shaft axis. So if the shaft axis is going uh, up and down on on the screen then the face of the, each uh, tooth is going to be also have a surface that is going up and down uh, parallel to that axis. So if you look at a, uh, uh, a uh, top view, and the top view you'll find that one uh, shaft is going to have a gear on it that uh, say uh, we can call this the pinion, which is a driver, and then another uh, is going to be called the gear, which is the, uh, the driven gear uh, of that system. Uh, we can also improve, to some extent, the transmission smoothness uh, by using helical gears. And helical gears are, again, attached to shafts that are parallel to one another. The axes are parallel. But now the surfaces of the faces of the teeth are at a helical angle uh, or at an angle uh, in relationship to the shaft axis. And the mesh, as you can see here, the angle is counter angled on the pinion and the gear themselves. And uh, that would lead to some consequences in terms of design because uh, in forced transmission, there will be an additional axial component in this case. Uh, when the shafts are not, uh, they don't have parallel axes and they have intersecting axes, we have uh, two choices. Uh, one uh, choice is to use what's called the bevel gear and the bevel gear uh, can transmit the input uh, rotation from one axis on one plane to another axis that is intersecting with it as you can see on this figure. So on this figure here, uh, the uh, uh, the axes of the rotation, the, the two axes are actually uh, intersecting. Here's one axis and then another axis and this is intersection point. And you might note here uh, that the angle of the teeth uh, is, uh, uh, it, it, it also has, we have an additional angle of the, of the surface uh, of the teeth in relationship to the axis of each shaft. Um, Finally, if we have intersecting axes, we can use another configuration called the worm gear. And the worm gear has helical teeth, um, and the axis of the gear is intersecting with the axis uh, of the uh, driven shaft. So the worm is the driver, and the driven shaft is uh, the one that uh, we are using to uh, get the output power. So. Now I wanted to show you some of the uh, basic terminology in uh, shaft design and here we will talk about the uh, various characteristics of uh, gears. Uh, 
So if you have a gear, for example, then we know that uh, we must know the diameter of the gear and we must know the number of teeth on, uh, that we can put on that uh, gear. In fact, when you have your design project, you will choose a certain number of teeth on, on each gear. Now, to be able to do that choice, we have a parameter called the, the, uh, the, diametral, the, the diametral pitch, and this diametral pitch is essentially the number of teeth uh, per uh, unit inch uh, of the diameter of the shaft, so it's, uh, of the gear. So it's as if you have the diameter and you count all the teeth on the, on the uh, gear and you divide the number of teeth by the diameter. For example, if the diameter is 8 inches, and you have 40 uh, teeth on around, uh, going around the uh, gear, then the diametral pitch will be uh, 40 divided by 8. That will be 5. So the pitch has the units of 1 over inch. Uh, then there's a very, various other things that we have to uh, start looking at, and this is illustrated in the figure as you'll see here. So what we have here is... Uh, uh, we have uh, on this side we have uh, what's called the bottom land and then on the uh, surface of the face of each uh, tooth we're going to call it the top land. Uh, the, the tooth here uh, has a width like into the page so this is the tooth width, width and the width is usually about two to three times of the uh, of the uh, circular pitch as we will see and the circular pitch is the distance on a, uh, a circle that's called the pitch circle. So the distance from uh, a point to another equivalent point on the circle is going to be called the circular pitch. So when we say diametral pitch, it's an inverse of uh, inch. The circular pitch is measured in inch. Okay, sounds a little bit uh, complicated, but it's not. So most shafts are, most gears are designated by the diametral pitch. Uh, now for, we have a, cir uh, a pitch circle. So in the pitch circle, we just count one point to an equivalent point and we get another tooth and so on. And uh, on that pitch circle, we have two um, uh, distances, one going from the circular pitch to the uh, top land that's called the addendum so you add and one going from the circular pitch to the bottom land and this is the addendum so you deduct usually the addendum is something uh, similar to or very close to the uh, inverse of the diametral pitch um, so it's not exactly a circle pitch so it's a little bit smaller and uh, on the other hand the um, uh, the distance, the dendum distance, is somewhat larger, as we'll see, just a little bit larger, and that is to create a clearance so that the teeth do not grind into each other and have excessive wear. Um, and uh, in, in that case, uh, we should be able to now to uh, talk about uh, each tooth, and each tooth has a profile, and this profile here, as you can see, this is a very important profile. And this profile is created or uh, obtained uh, by a process called the involute process that we will talk about. So the involute will make that profile, and the profile can be divided into two parts. One part here is the flank, and then another part is the face. And uh, that it basically uh, is uh, a, a full description uh, of, the, um, of the gear system. As I mentioned, the number of uh, teeth uh, per unit inch is capital P. So capital P is the diametral pitch. Okay, so this is the key one. If you take the inverse of P, then you get M. M is the modulus, and the modulus, or the modulo, uh, and the module, uh, and that is uh, in the inverse. So this, is, this has the units of inch. Uh, or units of millimeter. So M is the inverse of P. And then on the other hand, lowercase p is the circular pitch, which is pi times the module. So in this case, 
if you have lowercase p, then this is inch, and on a circle, if you have capital P, this is one over inch, and it is teeth per uh, inch. So with that, we can actually select gears, like if you do your project, you're going to select uh, the gears, and you can select them from uh, an online source, for example, and you can select them based on the diametral pitch or the modules. Um, so if you select them based on the diametral pitch, you have two teeth per inch diameter, two and a quarter, two and a half, three, and then it becomes even, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. This is the course, and then the fine, you start from 20 uh, teeth per inch all the way up to 200. So can you imagine 200 uh, teeth per inch? That's really uh, very, very, very fine. Maybe when you uh, look at uh, watches, for example, then you have very fine teeth. Uh, on the other hand, the modules is a different description, and the module is in inch or in millimeter, and then you have uh, preferred uh, sizes, and then next choice is also available. Um, so now if we look at spur gears, so this will be the focus of the discussion spur gears, although we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, bevel gears, and then we'll leave the rest for you. But in the case of spur gears, uh, we have um, something called the pressure angle that we will study. It's very important for force transmission. And the pressure angle currently is 20 degrees or 22 and a half degrees, uh, 25 degrees. Um, and that is current uh, uh, values for gear systems. In the past, it used to be 14 degrees. <clears throat> so now we can uh, choose, and the addendum uh, in that case, A is 1 over the diametral pitch, or 1 module, and then the dedendum is 1 and a quarter. So these are kind of things that we would be able to, uh, to use uh, once we select uh, our uh, gear uh, and use it in a design. Um, so as we said that the uh, common pressure angle is 20 to 25 degrees, and uh, or 20 and 25 degrees and the oldest uh, 14 and a half and then the uh, face width is three times a module uh, so or three times p uh, p is the circular pitch to five times p so if you look uh, in here then uh, this is uh, let's go back to uh, looking at the at the face width like this distance here is the face width so this three times p and then 1p is actually from here to here. So that's kind of a minimum specification uh, that we would use for uh, gear selection. And uh, once we have this specification, then we are able to uh, move on with the selection of the gear. And uh, now we uh, need to discuss uh, the main uh, issue in uh, gear design or the main uh, uh, kind of requirement that uh, we have here for meshing gears. Uh, as we know that when we have two gears and the teeth have to kind of mesh together very smoothly and this is called conjugate action. So let's study conjugate action that kind of develops this meshing between uh, two surfaces. And as you can see here, conjugate action uh, is a process by which we have one uh, surface, like this surface here, and it is in contact with another surface. And then this um, uh, surface is uh, rotating around a center, let's say O, and then uh, at A, and then the center of rotation of the second is B. And uh, there's a point of contact here. So the point of contact is at C. Now we can say that uh, the two of them have a conjugate action if and only if this point of uh, contact here uh, is uh, kind of uh, stationary, like it doesn't move. So this surface, as, as this rotates here, then uh, the, sur the points come down on this surface, and the points on that one come also uh, up. Um, so, uh, sorry, just this one going up and this one going up. And every point 
will meet exactly at that point C, which is um, the, uh, the, the center uh, where there is a pressure between the, the two of them. So in this case, we have um, a center uh, for where the pressure is, uh, there's a normal, and the normal is uh, normal to both surfaces, like here at this point. And uh, uh, in order for us to maintain a uh, constant uh, velocity, constant rotation velocity of the two mating uh, systems, then we sh if we connect the center, the two centers of rotation uh, with this line AB, uh, and uh, then draw the normal to the two surfaces in contact, then the normal is going to intersect the center to center uh, vector at a point P. And this uh, point P actually defines the uh, two circles that uh, result in constant uh, angular velocity for the two systems. For, so for for this gear one, this is a, a SCAM actually, it's a SCAM one, and this is two. Then we have uh, we will have R one omega one is equal to R two omega two because r times theta is the distance. If you think about it, r times theta is the distance on the arc length, and therefore, because the contact on the arc length is the same, then the r times omega is the same for the two systems. And the r1 and r2 are the radii, which is rb and ra. So if we have r, if we say ra times omega a, should be equal to rb times omega b. So this is kind of the introduction to uh, conjugate action, and now we're going to try to see if we can apply it to the case of um, uh, gears. So uh, as we mentioned before, that the forces are transmitted through a line, and this line here is called the line of action. So this line is normal to the two mating surfaces at all times. And uh, the line of action uh, is, um, uh, as I we mentioned, that this is normal to the, uh, to the mating surfaces. Um, and then we uh, talk about uh, these two circles again. And the circles, we have the uh, pitch circles. So we have each one has a pitch. This is a pitch circle for, uh, for cam one or gear one, if you will. And this is a bit pitch circle for cam uh, B or uh, or or uh, gear B. Uh, so now, if we let's go to uh, understanding what is an, uh, the the profile. How do we obtain the profile of a, a tooth of a gear? And this is a very interesting idea in which we uh, are going to learn something about uh, geometry. So if we have uh, first, let's say if we have a cylinder, and this cylinder uh, is what's called the base circle, and then we uh, wrap around that cylinder a, uh, uh, a very tight, um, let's say, a, a very tight uh, uh, rope or wire. So if we just kind of imagine in our heads that we have a string, and the string is wrapped around the circle and then our hand is holding it from that side. So we can actually take the string the string and pull it down or take it, move it up, and it will make these kinds of contacts with the cylinder at all times. So as it is making the contacts, let's say that we have a point on that circle here and it's going to be also initially on this uh, string. And then as we move the string up, then this point B1 is going to move to B2. And then we move the string up, and it's tangent to the circle at all times. To be, then B2 becomes B3, and B3 becomes B4. So this profile here that is generated by the motion of a point that is initially uh, on the surface of the circle of that, uh, of that uh, cylinder uh, so we can generate a profile. This profile, we're going to call it the involute profile. 
and that's essentially what we will use to uh, describe the tooth uh, of a gear. So uh, moving on to description of this, uh, how to produce conjugate now uh, action with the involute uh, profile. Uh, so let's start from the beginning here. This is the string and the string is wrapped around the uh, cylinder. So it's fixed here. And then you're moving your hand with the point D as point D moves. Uh, you imagine that there was a point initially uh, on the surface of the cylinder. That point on the surface of the cylinder now is going to have a trajectory, and this trajectory is going to go for, to B and C. This blue trajectory here is the involute that will be the face of the, uh, of the tooth of the gear. Uh, let's try to understand now the... Uh, kind of the conjugate action, how, the, how it works. Uh, we, uh, let's assume now that we have uh, two circles. So we have circles that has center O1, and that's the base circle, and then another circle that has a center O2. And uh, we're gonna call these base circles. So the base circles are not touching. Now uh, we're going to uh, generate uh, two other circles, and these two other circles are the pitch circles. So the pitch circles are the ones here that you can see, the dash. So this is a pitch circle for uh, related to center O2, and this is the pitch circle related to center uh, O1. And of course, they are both tangent exactly at the pitch point P, and the pitch point is right here. So now imagine that you have uh, a uh, particular uh, string, and this particular string is wrapped around the, ba the base circle 1, and then goes around base circle 2. So this string here is what you imagine. And suppose now that uh, this circle is moving with a uh, velocity omega 1, and this circle moving with the velocity of omega 2. So as the points keep coming down, then they will go through this common tangent here, and then they will continue on that circle. Therefore, you can see that this common tangent is a very important part of the description, and this common tangent at the shortest distance is A to B. So A to B would be intersecting with the pitch points, and uh, now, uh, as we learn about the involute action, if we generate an involute for all points on uh, gear 2, so let's say that we have a point here on gear 2, C, and then it starts to, or E, then it's, we, we can just generate the involute, the green involute, um, and then we also generate the uh, red involute on gear one, then they will touch exactly at the intersection uh, with the common tangent uh, of the uh, two gears. And uh, therefore, uh, they will mesh if the two gears are going to be moving at uh, omega one and omega two so that we have uh, constant uh, Tangential velocity is the same, so we have r1 omega1 equals r2 omega2. This tangential velocity is the same. Then all the points on the red envelope are going to touch exactly the points on the green envelope, and the, the contact point is going to be uh, right along the common tangent, and which also is going to be normal to the two envelopes. So having said that, then we satisfy that this is the, the force is going to be transmitted along the normal to the uh, contact, and then we will have the common tangent here is going to be important in relationship to uh, the uh, uh, tangent, then the normal to the, to the two center to center vector, and this angle here is basically called the pressure angle that we talked about. So now we're going to summarize uh, at the end of the day. We have uh, the pressure angle, 
you can see here this is phi and phi is the angle that describes the pressure the, the common tangent of the two uh, base circles uh, and the tangent to the pit two pitch circles um, and then we let's let's just look at the different uh, circles that we have we have the main one is the pitch circle so here's the pitch circle and uh, then we know also that there's a base circle the base circle is slightly smaller than the pitch circle and they are related by this uh, by the pressure angle so we'll, we'll look at this uh, ge geometrical relationship so the uh, as you see, the base circle is smaller than the pitch circle, okay? And from the pitch circle, we can deduct to find the addendum or add to find the addendum. So we've described now basically four circles for gear one. So this is one, two, three, four circles. Similarly, we have four circles for gear two. And uh, if we count them again, we have the base circle, the pitch circle, addendum, and dedendum. Um, now, the, one of the additional things that we have to consider is that from the base circle, we can start to describe the involute, which is the tooth profile that we will describe for this gear. So the tooth is going to be uh, actually made from an involute here and an involute here uh, through this common uh, tangent uh, process that we described earlier. Um, so once we have this, we um, have a complete description uh, of uh, the two gears that are rotating, one at omega-1, one, one is at omega-2, and uh, we know now the relationship the uh, addendum has uh, a distance of 1 over p from the pitch circle and the dedendum is 1 and a quarter over p from the pitch circle. So we're already now in uh, good understanding of the uh, two, to how the two gears will mesh together and we now finally realize that we have two very close circles. One is the um, uh, pitch circle and the other one is the base circle. The base circle we used to generate the involute, we started from there and they are both, if you look at the geometry, it's very easy to figure out that uh, the base circle is equal to the pitch circle times cosine theta because of the projection. So you can project it and find that relationship. Um, so let's uh, now to uh, move on to uh, probably like an example, but before we go there, I wanted to describe uh, a couple of other possibilities for gears. Uh, when we say rack, and the rack is just, uh, it has is a spur gear, this is a spur, and uh, then the rack is another spur gear, but it has an, a pitch diameter of infinity, because it's kind of a straight, like a straight section. So we have pinion and rack, so the pinion is the driver and then the rack is the driven and the rack can go up and down or back and forth for a variety of mechanical uh, operations that we will study and um, in this case uh, if you can see now for the rack the teeth are straight uh, for the case of the rack and they have a base circle uh, had a base pitch uh, and the circular pitch that are related with a cosine of the pressure angle as well. Uh, so now uh, we uh, can also have a configuration where we can have internal gear so we can reverse uh, and have a gear inside a another gear and the same definitions would apply in this case. So what I'm, I wanted to do now is uh, finalize this lecture with, uh, with an example and we wanted to talk about um, uh, so to kind of understand uh, some of the terminology uh, in selection for, uh, for gears. So we're going to have a opinion and a gear and uh, we will designate uh, a, uh, like a diametral pitch for one of them and the diametral pitch for the other one and then we'll try to figure out from those what are the, di the, the actual diameters of the two 
what is the center to center distance, how many teeth do we have on each one, what happens if we have a little bit misalignment in the two and so forth. So that's kind of the example that we will discuss right now. So in this example, we have a gear set that consists of a 16 tooth uh, pinion driving a 40 tooth gear and the diametral pitch is two uh, for both of them. And the addendum, dedendum are one over P and a one and a quarter over P as we've talked before. And the pressure angle is 20 degrees. So now we try to compute things. First one is compute the circular pitch. Circular pitch is pi over the diametral pitch. So it comes to be 1.57, no problem. And then the uh, next one is that we want to compute the center to center distance. So the center to center distance, we need to calculate the, uh, the, 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 the diameter of each one of them and, uh, and take half of that, that will be the pitch circle radius for each one. So the pitch diameters is um, for the first uh, gear, it's a 16 tooth and then it's two teeth per inch, so you have eight inches. The, this is the pinion. For the uh, gear, it's a 40, 40 tooth gear, and it has also the same pitch, two teeth per inch, so you get 20 inches. So if you sum eight inches plus 20 inches then and divide by two, then you get 14 inches. So the center to center distance is 14 inches. So you have to have C1 here and C2 here and have 14 inches and then you start putting gear here and gear here and then they will uh, mesh perfectly. Uh, all right. Now, uh, next one is that um, we uh, encounter a problem. So let's say uh, we have in mounting the, 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 the gears, uh, the center distance was incorrect and we made a one quarter inch increase in the distance then in this case, was we wanted to know what, what are the consequences to that. Are we going to be able to mesh the gears? Are they going to change uh, the forces and so forth? So they wanted us to compute the new value of the pressure angle uh, and the pitch circle diameters. So before we go there, we also have a requirement that we wanted to know the radii of the base circles. And the base circle is smaller than the pitch circle by the cosine of the pressure angle. So that is pretty simple. And that is what we have here for the pinion. Uh, it's four inches times cosine 20, so it's 3.76. And for the gear, it's 9.4. Now, next, uh, next step is uh, we wanted to uh, uh, go to this idea of uh, error. So in this idea of error, we have new diameters, right? Because we don't know, uh, we just know that the sum of these two all over two is equal to 14 and a quarter. So the quarter inch is the extra that uh, we just uh, added to the center to center distance. So we know the sum of the two, but we don't know each one. So in order for us to, uh, to figure out uh, the value of the pitch diameters for each, we must remember that the, uh, uh, the, the tangential velocity must be the same for the two gears, meaning R1 omega 1 equals R2 omega 2, and uh, that should not change uh, in any way if we just make an error in the center-center distance. So once we, we have the ratio, the old ratio is 16 over 40 of the diameters, so this used to be D pinion over DG, that should be the same as the a new ratio to, to make sure that the omega for the gear is this, and omega over uh, the pinion is unchanged when we change the distance uh, center to center. So now we have basically two equations in two unknowns for the two diameters, and we solve those to find the two values, it turned out to be 8.143 and 20.375. Now the consequences, what are the consequences for this? The consequence is that we know that the base radius is equal to the pitch radius times cosine phi. Therefore, we uh, uh, know all of everything is known 
except now that we have to figure there must be a new pressure angle and the new pressure angle is cosine minus one r of the base uh, uh, radius of the pinion divided by the new uh, base uh, radius by the um, new uh, pitch radius that we found. So the new pitch radius is not exactly eight, but it's eight point one four three. So that's <clears throat> that's going to change, and we get a slightly different uh, pressure angle. As and as we will see, that will have some consequences. Uh, so, to summarize, we have now an idea about the geometry, uh, especially, and the types of gears that uh, we uh, may consider. If we have parallel axes, uh, then we have a selection from uh, either a spur gear or a bevel gear, or uh, we can have bevel gear or helical gears. In these two cases, our axes are parallel. If the axes are intersecting, then we can select from a bevel gear or a worm gear. Uh, and uh, the, the title that we use is the, for the driver, it's called the pinion, for the driven is just the gear. And uh, we learned about the uh, involute uh, process, how to create uh, the, t uh, the teeth of the, of the gears and how they uh, contact at a constant uh, pressure angle and this pressure angle is normal to the two surfaces of the gears when they are meshing and they transmit the force along this normal. So the consequence is that this force transmission is very important for us in the design because we will actually decompose this force into a tangential component and a radial component and uh, those uh, must be considered in the stress analysis as we will see uh, later in this uh, section.